I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about Przemysl Fortress, part of which you can actually see behind me. And I have, a, I have a special guest here who's going to take us through a couple of, of the forts. Uh, can you tell us who you are and what you do just in general? Uh, my name is Tomasz Dzikowski mm -hmm. and for I think 25 years I try to uh, search in archives, uh, measure the forts, try to reconstruct in 3D and I write books about construction of, of forts of Przemysl because Przemysl is my main topic and then uh, Austrian for fortification in general. Okay, and now, can you tell us how the forts of Przemysl are constructed? Because I think a lot of people believe when we say the fortress of Przemysl, they think it's like a, like a big castle that 100,000 people were stuck in, yeah, and most, they don't understand how a fortress tower is. Most tourists came to Przemysl stand in the marketplace in Przemysl and ask where is the fortress. But uh, during in 19th century, they start to build ring fortresses. Okay. So ring means that around the city, quite far from the, from the town was a ring of fortification. In case of Przemysl it was uh, 45 kilometers long uh, around uh, with 15 main forts like this one behind us which is number one actually. Okay. But also between these main forts were uh, by Austrians called Zwischenwerks, so secondary forts uh, between the main ones which very often were, were much more modern than the main forts, a bit earlier, in the 80s. Okay, well, when did they start building the whole thing? Actually, first uh, works, mostly infantry and artillery earthworks, were built during crime war in 1854-55. Okay. Uh, because there was a danger of war with Russia at the moment. Then in 1956, all these earthworks were sold into private hands because uh, the, there was no treat of the war uh, later. Okay. Until 1878, there was not much working in Przemysl for so far over 20 years. It was just... Just nothing happened here. Okay. Then they again built uh, nine uh, earthworks around Przemysl in 1878, but that's it. And then they start, they make decision to build permanent fortress here in the 80s. And this is number one, so the first yeah. one. Actually not. No, Actually okay. they didn't start with number one because they create, you know, plans of all fortress oh, yeah, of course, yeah. and then uh, start actually in case of Przemysl with number eight. Okay. First eight, then twelve, and then number five and seven and one. And so, so when was this, when did this one start being built? Uh, actually, this one is from the first half of 80s, uh, starts in 1883, finish in 1886. Okay. So, so three, uh, a little bit over three years took to build this one, but this one is quite huge. Oh. Now, um, this one here, obviously it's been partly destroyed, and you were saying something about how they rebuilt it. Can you explain it a little bit if we walk through? Or? Actually, during uh, first or second siege, this gate was hit by, by the projectile, yeah. as well as you can see in, in, in the middle of the fort, few traces of projectiles on the walls and the right part uh, fall down. Okay. You can see it on the photos from, from the time of retaking the fortress. And if you look carefully on the structure of the bricks, you can see when, where the poor structure begins, yeah. because this, this is the wartime reparation. Right. So yeah. each fort uh, in its crew got six or eight suppers which were just to fix uh, what's broken in the fort, like part of the gate or when there is a crater after explosion, they had to fill it up back with, with the earth. So it was their only job. Okay, well let's walk in and take a okay. look. At what, what, are, what is this here? What kind of room would this be? Uh, on the left side was a guard house together, together with small arrest for just to uh, private. Oh, like a like a cell here. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. So this would small be small cell with two prison, so they can sleep, <laughs> and then and probably for, for for soldiers which drank too much. And and this here. And the next one was a uh, normal room for soldiers for sleeping. Okay. Pretty it's small one. Yeah. Just for, for few of them, but these rooms here were just uh, these barracks here were just uh, for the 
um, George defense. Okay. Because you can see here the corridor turning to the left. Yeah. Unfortunately, next uh, two rooms are blown up. Oh, okay. They oh, were broken with embrasures pointing into the middle of this half. Down so there. yeah, in these two directions and from opposite sides, so it was flanking, uh, it was crossfire from both sides. If you got through the if gate. If you get through the gate, you still are not in, inside the fort. And you're getting, you're getting hit by both yeah. sides, okay. Well, let's see what's next. Should we go over there or should we go back? I think we can go to the left because this one, this fort is completely symmetrical. Okay, so everything. So if you see <laughs> left or right half, is as you see it all. All right. Should we go straight or should we go here? We can go to the left because on the left was the uh, commandant room. Okay, the commandant's room. So on these steps he can step up. Yeah. And the first room to the right was just for the commandant. So two on this side, two on the other side or is that how? Yeah, two other, uh, it's, it's completely symmetrical. It's not a bad room if you get it by yourself or with maybe two people. <laughs> it looks completely different. You had you know, wall on the wood on the floor. Oh yeah, sure. And then heating and then shelves and... What about this? These four rooms were for Mannschafts in German, so in for privates okay. in English. Aha, uh -huh, okay, and how many men this would one for 20, 22 uh, soldiers. It was not stair preachers, only one level of them. Oh man, that's not comfortable. No, you got pretty pretty much space. And then what? And what probably the rooms were so high because it's strange that you know you had one level of yeah, uh, sleeping of and so high rooms because of during artillery fight you get a lot of smoke oh. and smoke goes up. Yeah, sure. So you still got some oxygen below. If the rooms were smaller. The, these guys inside. Uh, You'd have to leave. Fight, yeah. Now, w how this wasn't open, obviously, was it? Uh, how of course. Would, how on the right side, we can see remains of the brick and walls. Okay. This, this closing, this, these rooms. Uh, unfortunately, most of these uh, bricks were stolen after Second World War to build houses down there in the village. That makes sense. <laughs> and these were good uh, military mm, Okay, well, we'll see that uh, maybe in a little bit. Let's. Uh, Okay, these are toilets, yes? Yes, these are toilets and left part with uh, three toilets is for officers. Three for officers. Yeah, and then here was the wall, yes. dividing it completely from the part for the manshaft. Uh, and and you can still them. see traces on the wall of the wooden construction here. Oh, there was, okay, yeah, of course. So, so, so it wasn't also open. here is an uh, opening for another wood, so it was closed with wood. And here is Pisoyer. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Where to next? Now that's blocked off. Yeah, that one is blocked up. Let's go in this direction and then to the left uh, in the central. Uh, this was main entrance to, to barracks and then to munition magazines. And also by this uh, passage, you can brought guns here to this place yeah. when there was a gun lift. Uh -huh, okay, so this is where you'd, you'd have a, like a... Yeah, and guns side. and pieces go two stairs up. Okay. And yeah. you can still see remains of the, of the mechanisms. Now up there, what's up there? Up there, up there was just a normal room for, for privates with okay. a fence, the fence, fence there, yeah. but the fence there was just decoration of the fort. Okay. I think we can go left. Okay. If you take a look at the walls, yeah. there are still traces of uh, projectile hits. Now, how many people would live in just this fort uh, in general? I mean, maybe not when you're crammed in, but... Uh, usually it was for, for three up to four hundred. Okay. Uh, so maximum was one company of infantry. Infantry company uh, during the war at the beginning was 250 people. Yeah. And then artillery, depending on how many guns you had on the fort. So, so for each one, it was in the t tables how many <laughs> of them is needed for for the crew of each cannon. So, uh, the rest are, were artillery and uh, eight sappers usually. Okay, that's cool. Originally, they supposed to have also a doctor uh, when they built this fort in the 80s. That was the plan. But then the doctors were moved out from the fort. More toilets.
Yeah, more toilets. And the right sa side yard. Okay. With stairs to upper level and uh, another rooms for privates, yeah. kitchen, uh, food magazines and telephone central. Telephone if you take second. a look at the cent telephone central, yeah. when they blown it up during capitulation, you can see how hard they, they destroy. See the brick wall now. Yeah, and you can see the brick wall here. But here you can see the traces of shrapnels on the walls. Yeah. Because of this telephone central, so they destroy it completely. Completely, just blow it up <laughs> completely. Then that yes, this this is the only remain of, of the wall here. And these three rooms were munition magazines. Munition magazines. Oh, and now something like uh, uh, not munition magazines, food magazines. Food course. magazines. But at the other, the other, when you were saying that a bunch of uh, a bunch of the cannons were older black powder cannons, would they keep tons of black powder in the forts or in the city or what? Do you, you know, that's in dangerous. the fort they they keep only uh, supply for twenty four hours intensive fight. Okay. Uh, usually it stands for longer, but the rest of the munition magazine were kept in the munition magazine quite far from the mm, fort, so if the munition magazine blown up, it doesn't hurt the fort. Or the city. Also quite far from the city, so, so the same doesn't hurt the city. Okay, uh, that makes sense. In standard yeah. uh, you know, munition magazine was something like 60 tons of black powder, and there were uh, several of them. That's uh, uh, like 30 or 40. Imagine uh, how much that could are, are, on, are on the ring, okay. behind the ring, actually. Now, what, what's this thing on the floor? Okay, and this is another Poterne to site and uh, to site uh, cover. Okay. But uh, in the same time, it works as the bedroom. So, 20 people from here, from each room, can go here and wash themselves. Okay, okay. Just next to the kitchen. Bathroom kitchen. And also in kitchen, you can see that there was an oven for uh, privates, the large one. Mm -hmm. On that wall is the trace of the oven. And here in the corner, trays of the small one for the for officers. officers. Oven for officers. Officers always got it better. <laughs> so do we go upstairs now? Yeah, I think we can go. Okay. All around here are posi gun positions. Okay. So here is the right flank. Okay. Uh, and it was used for lighter guns to flank in direction to the next fort. Right. Yeah? Oh, of course. So like next um, nine centimeters stand here. And then in front, main uh, artillery of the fort, and in front were 12 centimeters. Maximum range was eight kilometers. So you have to imagine the map of the area. Yeah. And then to see where this <laughs> fort can shoot and operate, okay. actually. And where would they keep? The, where would the guns be placed? They'd be. Uh, they were placed between this uh, traversen. Okay. So so uh, traversen protect the gun right. from frontal fire. Yeah. Because if it's. Uh, uh, low angle fire. Yeah, it, it's uh, not going to clear that. Yeah, it's, it will stop the projectile. Mortal, fi mortal fire could uh, uh, hit it, but this fort was designed when there was no much mortars at the time. Right. Only you know low trajectory uh, guns. Okay. Uh, and the same on the uh, front. You had also this traversen. Yeah. Which protects from a little bit side fire too. Okay. And even if something explodes in the one gun, gun stand, the shrapnels will not hurt oh, no, another no, one. No, yeah. Explode everything. And so that's yeah. Ukraine over there. That's Ukraine. If you look careful there, you can see the border. Oh yeah, you can see. Yeah, of course. Wow. Okay, so you could throw a stone to the border from here. <laughs> Actually, right now, yes. Yeah. And uh, now this is. You can see how steep. Don't fall down. Yes, from here you can see how deep is the ditch. Look at that. Imagine, you, this is, that's got to be hard to <laughs> attach. Imagine the guys attacking from this. With no trees coming from the other side and coming and there up. There was uh, another mower in, uh, another wall in the ditch. Oh yeah. Five meters uh, high. Uh, it's, uh, it dis it's disappeared now, yeah. but it was another obstacle. Wow. So you need to bring a ladders with you to cross the, the mower and yeah. you got Flanking fire and people from did that. People would attack these things anyway, you know. I guess you have to. I guess if you're Russian, you, know, you have to. I wouldn't like to do it. No, I wouldn't like to do it. Especially you could see you coming from way, way, you know, way Guys over which were attacking never seen fortification at all. Oh, yeah. You know, they were like thrown into kind the peasants, of... peasants, yeah? Yeah, it, they were thrown into cubic ward, you know, with these obstacles, barbed wire, trenches, uh, wow. ditches, caponiers. They couldn't define it and name it. 
You know, they just moved in some direction and then <laughs> fire from the side, fire from the front. And they didn't know fortification system, so it's they didn't one. know it's where one. to run, yeah. where to hide. Yeah. It was just, you know, some some were lucky, some some not. Yeah. Wow. Who, who already get into It's so dish. nice that you get a much better idea of, you know, we've talked so much about Przemysl, but to actually see all the, you know, how, how, how tough a fortress can be, you know? Yeah, actually, if you walk in this forest, you can, you can see still the trenches, yeah. strong points, so, so you can really touch the history here. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah, I believe you. And then in, in, with papers, you can find out the name of commandant of this particular strong point or in the trench. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of normal people's stories come out of, of the document. Okay. And, and you wouldn't believe in some of them. Yeah, well, you know, um, anybody who, who's Polish out there is watching this, you know, he's written books and stuff, so you should definitely get his books. I, unfortunately, they're not translated into English. Learn Polish. Learn Polish. <laughs> Learn Polish. I would lo I'd love to read one of them. I think this is great stuff. So where are we? Where should we head now? Uh, we can go down here. Okay. So this is the left flank. Okay. And from this direction, it could shoot in front of the fort number fifteen, which we visit. Right. Also, so they were connect connected in this way. There were no tunnels <laughs> underneath, no. now, underground. How, but what was the, the how how thick was the thickest earth that they'd have on top of the construction? Actually, uh, most, most uh, earth is in front of the construction, okay. so from the direction the projectiles can go. Especially with the lower trajectory. Yeah, yeah, because it was designed for the low trajectory. So, for example, the, um, uh, the, the rampart is 8 uh, meters thick, because wow. they checked that 8 meters could stop, uh, let's say, 15 centimeters project, project, projectory. Okay. So this, this is the rear position. Yeah. And also, I guess it stands, so, so stand for, for, for cannon to protect the, the entrance to the fort. Yeah. And the back terrain, as I told you, in 80s, this fort was completely separated. Right. So we've seen pretty much the whole, whole of this, this fort. Yeah. And is this one of the bigger ones? Yeah, it's one of the biggest ones. Okay. No armors in this one, but all the big ones with armors, with armored turrets, were blown up. Okay. So oh, well, so that's why we have this one. And now, then during Second World War, the concrete was taken for the construction too. So it was like a quarry. Yeah. And so very often only earth parts are left of Przemysl forts. Now, how do they get there? This one is really worth to see. Well, I, yeah, but this is, there's plenty to see here. How do, how do they get their names? Who named them? Uh, actually, they were named um, usually uh, by a local village. So, for example, there was Fort Praukowce because there was village Praukowce. And only in three cases, uh, they were named after uh, officers uh, which were in charge of Jani uh, Direction, which was Direction of Engineering here. Or in case of Sadi Sodio, he was director of, uh, he was inspector of uh, engineering forces oh, in, yeah. in all monarchy. Okay. Uh, so when he when he retired in 1893, Franz Josef, so the emperor, allowed him to uh, choose the fort which he wants his name on. Okay, and it's this one. Yeah, and it's this one. Oh, that's cool. Because he was also designer of this one, so. Which were the other two that were not named after? after uh, there is a Brunner, okay. after Moritz Brunner, who wrote uh, several uh, books about fortifications to learn, uh, to teach uh, architects and officers how to design forts. Okay. Uh, and he was also director of engineering in Przemysl in the 90s, so, so put large influence into Przemysl Fortress. And the earlier one was number 12 Werner, after Anton Werner, who was also in the charge of building fortification here in Przemysl. Okay, so the engineers got them. Yeah, so, so after the engineers, in case of Przemysl. But the rest are just names after the villages okay. around. Okay, the local villages. Local villages, yes. And imagine how for Austrian it would be hard to uh, pronounce some of these names during, you know, telephone speech, during uh, fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, please, uh, for number, number one by six, Dziewięczyce is under fire. <laughs> That's funny. And next is Popovice <laughs> and whatever. So oh, of course, you had so many languages in the, in the, in the army. But it was really a uh, problem here uh, with the communications. Because you, you got here Poles, uh, Slovaks, Italians, 
uh, Hungarians, yeah, Austrians, and so yeah. there were so many languages that they had uh, problems with communication with, with uh, each other. So very often the privates from local villages um, near to Przemysl or Lemberg didn't know the German comments, so they just yeah, 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 I understand. I, we got you. We got you. I, I, don't attack. You're saying don't attack. We got you. Just stay here. Okay, we we can. But it was this way. <laughs> should we uh, should we head down? Yep. Okay. Now, what am I looking at here? This looks like some sort of artillery emplacement. Yeah. Yes, you're looking at uh, flanking casamata of uh, Fort Number no. Fifteen, uh, Borek. Borek. Uh, and this flanking casamata, in fact, in time of war, looked completely different. Okay. How did it, how did it look? I mean, now you have on the floor with this uh, metal pieces uh, for wheels of the cannons, uh, but you don't have uh, walls and the roof. So this had walls and a roof. Okay. Yeah, it was a building. Uh, Germans say granite zither, so uh, could stand the granite heat. Uh, and then this traditor took uh, part in fights during the first siege of Fort Spanish during the st Sturm yeah. to next fort, number fourteen. When the infantry get close to the fort, these two guns could shoot five or six rounds per minute into these people. And these were a bit hidden from anybody. Yeah, coming. they were completely hidden from, from uh, outside, so Russians couldn't move the gun to, to hit its embrasure. All oh, right, because you can still see the, the wall which uh, covers the embrasures. Right. It shoots only to flank to the fort, so, so from, the, from the front you cannot hit it. So the Russian infantry would be marching towards the next fort there and they'd get surprised by, by this one. Surprise fire by this and the next is uh, double turrets uh, oh, battery, yeah. also for 8 centimeters. Okay. So this one also hit these Russians pretty well. Now what kind of guns were used here? Okay, uh, these were quite uh, modern guns in case of uh, Fortress Tremish because most of the guns in Tremish were quite old. Like, old. like pieces from 1861 models. One third of them were models 1861. So they're black powder? Black powder cannons, mostly, mostly in this case 12 and 15 centimeters. Then they got uh, model 75, so 1875. Okay. Mostly field cannons, 9 centimeters uh, in this case. And also black powder cannons. And these were uh, much more modern for uh, projectile with the shell, so, so join it together. So Germans called it uh, Schnellfeuer Kanone, uh, so rapid fire, rapid fire uh, gun. Okay. Now were were these reliable and accurate? How how good were these guns, the modern ones? And uh, these these guns were really new pieces in in 90s. Okay. Uh, actually, they are a little bit similar to modern construction. Uh, not much changed since since these cannons. They, it's already a new design, and especially. Uh, lavette to these cannons were a kind of complicated one because it was called minimal sharpen lavette. Yeah, the so, minimal fire aperture. So yeah, so so it was uh, designed so tricky that on the tip of the barrel doesn't move in the sharpen. On the back of the barrel moves. Okay, so you move so a lot. So the sharpen can be small. In other hands, if you turn cannon. Yeah, you if know. you go at the middle, you go like yeah, this. Yeah, but yeah. this, you'd bring a lot. Yeah. Here. Now, so was that was that difficult to operate then, or difficult to move accurately? Or? Actually, about four or five men uh, operated this cannon together okay. with guys which bring the munition. Uh, at the years when they build these forts, uh, not only artillery artillery operate these cannons because they had something called uh, help infanteria. So, so guys which were normally in the infantry, but help in uh, small works for artillery, like bringing bo boxes of uh, munition. And look, that in case of this uh, flanking casamata, there was no munition magazine inside. Now, um, the, the older models, the ones from the 1860s and 1870s, the black powder artillery, were they still reliable or still kind of accurate? Or did they have problems with operation and mechanics? They, they had a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of parts break here during usage of these cannons, actually. Okay. And there are reports uh, pointing to, this, to, this, uh, to troubles with these cannons. They were, they protect the fortress actually, so they were enough, <laughs> they were enough. To, to, to fight with Russians, especially that Russians didn't have uh, siege artillery here during the first siege. They only had uh, their, their, their normal army artillery, Okay. so the largest uh, caliber was 18 centimeters and the rest uh, mostly field guns 3 inches. 
Okay, now, now another thing about the preparations that you said was interesting. Now, I read in the Max Hastings catastrophe that one of the Austrian problems was that before the first siege, they hadn't taken down the trees, and they should have. But you said that's not quite uh, true. They, they take down the trees about one kilometer in front of the... So that's what they planned to take. Uh, and they did, but in many cases, they, didn't, they were not able to remove these trees. Okay. So these trees uh, made the protection for Russians actually. Further than one. They can kilometer. hide behind, you know, fallen, fallen trees. And they even tried to burn uh, the, the, the part of the forest. Yeah. But there, it was rainy weather, so they couldn't make uh, the fire to, to burn, burn them. So, but the first and kilometer. Uh, even in case of this fort, yeah. there was a forest left about a little bit over one kilometer uh, to the left and to the front from the fort. And Russians really start attack on on next fort from this forest because they can they can uh, move in long distance in small groups. Okay. Uh, that artillery that, that it's not good target for the artillery. Right. If only 15 guys run. Yeah, sure. You, you don't have time to to point to them. So so they just hide and run. It was uh, method used by, by by Russians during during the attack. Oh, that's pretty clever. Uh, so they, they, let's say, infiltrate this, this forest yeah. and uh, make larger group there and from there attack the, the, the next fort. And then the traditor and flanking Kazamata and battery start to shoot to them from here. Okay, now what about this armor that's obviously been lying here for a long, long time? Uh, actually, these uh, pieces of armor are found uh, during excavation of, uh, on various forests of Przemysl. Okay. And during capitulation, when they blown up the forts, the armor armors were broken in pieces and, and uh, you know fly all over and the it's place. It's just still staying here. <laughs> yeah, but it's digged up and then then brought here. Yeah. And actually, these are all these armors are from 90s because in 80s when they built uh, artillery forts here, there were no single armor uh, mounted in mounted in Przemyś because at this point of time. Uh, Austrian factories didn't produce armors, so they have to order armors from German factories like Gruson or Krupp, okay. which were quite expensive. Yeah. But then, uh, at the end of the 80s, uh, some, uh, some uh, Austrian factories start to learn how to make armors by, by themselves, and the most famous was Skoda factory. Okay, yeah. Uh, so all these armors here are from from Skoda factory, and you can see 15 centimeters mortar. Actually, this ring is from this mortar, so Copula was inside. Okay. Then there is Bachtum Stand, and even part of this mortar which was here inside, uh, that one with yeah, the yeah, round uh, edge. Uh, now, was there only just one kind of armor that was standard armor, or did they have a lot of different... No, they had a lot of different armors. Uh, standard were on the rotating turrets in case of Przemysl, because there were three types of them. 15 centimeters mortar, 15 centimeters Hovice, and 8 centimeters uh, rapid-fire gun. And then a rotating Beobachtung stand, so observation copula. But then for traditors, for flanking Kazamata, yeah. they produce uh, various number of uh, armors, very often designed for a single fort. So they make like four pieces in a row, and that's it. That's all for now, but click here to see our special on archaeology, and like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter, so Flo, our social media guy, has things to do with his time. See ya.